Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jeff with Indy Country Living. Hey, Terry and I just want to start off saying we apologize for not uh, doing any videos this summer. We have been so cra crazy busy. But we welcome you back to our channel. A um, couple things that we're going to cover in this video is the first one, we want to just kind of do a quick uh, rundown of our raised garden beds and how much that we enjoy them. If you've been thinking about doing this, or a raised garden bed, this is the only way to go. It's so easy to maintain, but uh, we love it. The second thing that we wanted to talk about, obviously, was the purchase. As you can see behind me, we have purchased a air motor windmill. It is a 27-foot tower, 8-foot cell. It's an A702. We purchased it from windmillparts.com. Neil from windmillparts.com has been a super great help. And uh, as with any other aero motor or any kind of windmill uh, enthusiast, I've asked a lot of questions. I've gotten a lot of answers. So I appreciate that. So it's getting there. Uh, it's taken a little bit just to figure out where we wanted it. But anyway, we hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, as always, please like and subscribe. We enjoy uh, comments, we enjoy uh, whether they're negative or positive, and then we also just enjoy knowing that people are watching our clips, probably because they have similar interests like us. Anyway, enjoy this video. We'll see you next time. We are going to stencil out the lettering for the air motor tail fan. And I did buy the stencils for it, and the stencils, um, one side is bigger than the other, but it's probably not going to matter because one side actually has smaller print. So anyway, uh, what I've done is cut out the, the pattern and to kind of go around what's been tack welded onto the tail fan already. And, uh, and then I've just got some, uh, some black carbon paper underneath, and I'm just going to trace that out. And then uh, I'll go back over with the black marker. So anyway, um, and then we'll flip it over and do the same thing for the other side. Anyway, super excited about this project. Can't wait to see it finished, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I already have the uh, uh, carbon paper underneath. I have cut these stencils out, and you can see this is the actual tack welded rib uh, that the tail, bra uh, tail fan bracket will mount to. So I just went ahead and cut those out like if it was on a piece of paper. Um, they're a little bit bigger than what you would expect. And, uh, but that's okay because it's not really going to matter. You're not going to see the, the small details like that up in the air. So anyway, all I'm doing is just tracing these out and uh, we're hoping that it goes through the transparency paper, carbon paper.
we have our lettering transposed onto our windmill tail fin, we're ready to do some painting. I looked at different uh, web pages and whatnot of, of coloring. People use either Regal Red, uh, they use like an International Harvester Red. I bought a can of, of Rust-Oleum Regal Red and I just painted it on a stick. We took it to our local Sherman Williams paint dealer. He gave us this emerald. This is a water-based uh, urethane enamel. It's supposed to last a long time. Really looking forward to seeing what this looks like. We're both excited. Terry's been wanting a, uh, a windmill for a very long time. So now the big thing is, is where we're going to put this thing. We are going to paint this the same red that we paint the tail fin letters, the Aero Motoring Company from Chicago, Illinois. And um, we're trying to leave it somewhat original, but we also want to kind of brighten things up so it can be seen. But uh, a couple of interesting things about this, there's actually a, a time stamp here. It says 421, meaning that it was built in April of 2021. So uh, let's get started painting this. I'm going to take this helmet off of here and then uh, and get to work. The Aeromotor A702 27 foot tower is about to get its forever home. We have moved this around a couple times trying to figure out the best location for it. Terry kind of wants it to where it looks like it's still in the pasture. So we've actually got it exactly where I think we want it. And uh, we are going to do some location of utilities and I've got some field tile that's out there in the field and uh, try to figure out exactly where we want this to be sure. And then, um, but also I kind of just wanted to show you the, the actual uh, windmill itself. It's completed. The only thing that we don't have is the uh, vein, the tail vein, and, um, but we'll put that on when we get ready to, to actually set it on top of the tower. <laughs> Minus the bird's nest. Somebody needs to invent a screen for that. So here it is. This is a A702. It's an eight foot sail, all completely assembled except for the vane. We'd actually put this thing together and ended up with a huge gap on the overlap. It was probably three inches. And uh, so my wife uh, came up with the idea, let's take it back apart and we'll try it again. So we did, we took it back apart and it fit. And uh, this time we came within like an inch and I just kind of had to bear, bear down on it to get it to, uh, to get close on the, the cell part of it to line up the holes for the bolts. But uh, other than that, this stand worked out really great. We've got everything painted up, ready to go. And um, there it is. Today, we're just going to work on getting this tower set and ready. So uh, let's go over here. I want to show you a couple things that we've got um, as far as placement of the, of the windmill. And uh, also, be sure if you're going to place your own windmill, uh, call for locates, call 811 for your local uh, area to determine if you have any utilities in the area. I already know where my utilities are. Um, I've put in everything myself. The electric line that goes from one barn to the horse barn, um, uh, I know exactly where that's at. We just put it in a couple years ago. And then I also have a field tile that I put in. And um, when you put in your own utilities is to do what they call as-built and um, you just basically take measurements off of fence lines, things like that, do yourself a drawing, and then that way you'll always know where everything's at. So I, I've got a really good idea where the uh, field tile is, and it'll make it a lot easier for um, trying to locate those lines. Let's head over here. And, uh, there's a couple things though that we have. Off to my right right here, we have a 12 inch field tile that I tied in, a eight inch field tile. So I've already witched the uh, field tile that I installed. I already know it's 16 feet off the edge of this fence, but once I go beyond past the fence, it actually kicks out a little bit. So I kind of wanted to stay in between that 
and then off to the right, eight feet from the fence, I have my electrical utility, which cuts right through where I'm standing and goes up to the horse barn. So I already know where both of those are. But uh, I did witch the field tile because I just wanted to verify once I get past the edge of the fence, the corner of the fence, um, that it does kick out a little bit. It gets you really close. I was dead on on these here, so let me show you. Right, so over here where we're going to put the tower, I know that I have a field tile. It's roughly within uh, probably two and a half feet away from the foremost outside leg. So anyway, um, how to find this, obviously, I use my witching sticks. All this is is just bare copper number six, and they seem to be a lot more reactive than just like the small uh, wires, coat hangers, whatever other people may use. So um, I'm just going to kind of demonstrate this. The key to this is just allowing this to be really loose in your hands and allow them to just be able to, to move as they need to. Let's give it a try. They're starting to cross now. And there they go. And all the way. And that is in perfect line with the white flags that I have staked. These things work great. If you've never used them before, uh, just get out and practice with them. Again, just leave them really loose in the hands. I've used it so many times here. So, something to keep in mind. Okay, so now we're going to prep the, uh, the markings for our holes to be drilled on center. We know that each one of these corner legs are at an angle. And we know that the, the anchor post are five feet long. This is a completed anchor post, and it just has a bolted-on T connection that will actually go in the ground, just like that. What we're doing on ours is we're drilling 18-inch holes. Um, we're going to shoot for five foot, but most of the time, your augers on skid steers will not go five foot. You might be lucky to get four, so I'll just have to hand dig the rest. My goal was was to go five foot and then pour a concrete footer base pad at least six inches deep and then allow that to sit on top. Um, that'll give us a uh, about six inches above ground. That would be ideal. But I think what's going to happen is, is because we're not going to be able to go that deep, I think we're going to try to shoot for four and a half feet deep in the ground. We'll pour a six inch footer pad for the base to sit on and then we'll actually have about a foot out of the ground, which is probably good because uh, our windmill is for basically just the nostalgia and for looks. So one of the things that we thought about doing was actually placing a, uh, pouring a concrete pad around the structure, placing a, a hand pump right in the center of it just for decoration. So with that being said, since I think we're just probably going to end up with four and a half feet deep hole. I measured up four foot on the, the tower and I've attached my plumb bob. Now my plumb bob, I'm just using this square just to kind of follow that string line. And I'm gonna measure out at the bottom of this at the ground level to the corner that it comes out to be about seven and a half inches at the, at the four foot level. So if we go, we drill a four and a half foot hole, pour it with six inch concrete for the footer pad, <coughs> for the uh, anchor pad to, to rest on. Anyway, we would have to go out seven and a half inches on this side. One of the other things though, looking at this, this is two inch uh, angle. So to be centered of that, you would add another inch. So what we may end up doing, yep, it'd be another inch. So what we'll end up doing is actually going six inches out <coughs> from each one of these holes. And then that will give us that four foot mark. If you were to, you know, you can raise your tower however high you want. I wouldn't want to much more than two foot but uh, as this 
this as you come down further in this angle your plumb bob's going to get closer to your structure so um, if we were at five feet we would probably be at uh, almost nine inches out if I want five feet marking on here but really you want your bolted connection to be above ground anyway and uh, if you're going to pour a concrete pad around it give yourself plenty of room so anyway that's uh that's that so I'm going to drive these stakes in six inches off each corner and it'll be ready to be uh, to have the holes drilled. Mm -hmm.